Hey there everyone and welcome to Bootstrap 4 Training. Now let's get started with the Bootstrap and obviously the first good thing to do is to install that Bootstrap. Now installing the Bootstrap is really simple because all you need is to reference a CSS file and JavaScript file, that's it. Now although it looks really simple in the words, it's not that much simple. So we have to follow a couple of steps. Now first of all, I'll open up my Bootstrap 4 folder which is on my desktop. Now obviously you will be seeing this folder completely full there because you will be getting it at the very top of the course. And uh, if you want to download the GitHub, there is a link for GitHub as well. Uh, now I, I highly recommend everybody to just uh, don't use those exercise files, just keep them for the reference but create everything with me. Writing the code is the only way to learn it. So first of all, I'm gonna click on 01 there and this is going to be my first folder there in which we'll be talking about all the basic stuff like typography, images, carousals, or maybe tons of things other as well. I'll create a new folder as well that is gonna hold all of our projects in the Bootstrap 4. So this is where whenever we'll be moving uh, away from the basic training and we'll be jumping into the project area, this is where we'll be going, okay? And inside the zero fun folder, uh, now the first thing that we are gonna do is create a lot of folder. Now, since we are in the section one, that's why we are in here. So let's just create a zero one again inside this as well. I know this is confusing, but this is where we want to keep all of our file. Okay, makes sense. Now what we're gonna do is let's open up this project folder in the Atom. And what we're gonna do is go into Bootstrap 4001. Open that, it's completely blank. Command N to create a new file, or you can go file and new file, no, no big deal there. And I would like to save this in here with the name of index.html. Okay, makes sense. Now I'll press an exclamatory key and hit the tab key. So automatically a boilerplate code is being filled up for me. Now this is nothing. Uh, if you have coming from, from any HTML website or anything, you might already be familiar with that. I'll save this. Now what it does, gives us a doc type, gives us an HTML tag with a language reference of English, head tag and a body tag. In the head tag we have few information like character set to be used is character encoding basically to be UTF-8. You have to use a viewport which we'll be using quite a lot. Uh, it automatically detects on which device you are, maybe mobile, maybe on a desktop screen or maybe a smaller screen. It automatically does that. Okay, right now we don't have any CSS, so what we want to do is go into the package and load a live server there. Now this live server is gonna launch up there and there we go, I need to put this live server in here, okay. And I can close these guys now, we don't need them. Okay, and what we can do in here is adjust this guy to, to the left of the screen, okay, let me just do that quickly. Uh, okay, where is that? Here it is. So this is going left and this is going right. I should have remembered that uh, keyboard shortcuts. Okay, anyways, let's go in here and let's just write a paragraph in here. Now notice on the right hand side of the screen, maybe we can get a little bit room in here. Okay, that's nice. Is I'll type an H1, then a arrow sign there and I'm gonna write, write lorem and let's write five. Now this is the magic of Emmet plugin that we have installed. Now hit the tab key there. And again, make sure your cursor is at the end of the lorem five and hit the tab key there. It has automatically filled up some of the H1. And notice as I save it, it automatically reloads everything for me. That's the fun of live server there. So notice uh, now the one thing that I want you to focus is when I, you wrote an H1 tag there, uh, automatically the browser does apply some CSS to it. And that is uh, one thing that Bootstrap does quite a lot of good things for you. Now let me just walk you through with the one line of the documentation is uh, if I go in here uh, at the bottom, this is the power part there, normalize.css. Now since browser automatically applies a few style rules and CSS for you, this normalize.css which is automatically comes in with the Bootstrap package is gonna flush out all those CSS and will apply its own CSS. Okay, that's one good thing you have learned. Now how we can get the Bootstrap in here? Now there are a couple of ways to install the Bootstrap and uh, we are gonna click on the download there. Uh, by the way, I'm in the documentation and I'm downloading it. Now there are a lot of ways to download the Bootstrap, but we are gonna focus only two, the manual download and the CDN. 
Yes, you can also install it Bower and all these things, but let's just stick with the basics. So I'm gonna download the Bootstrap and uh, in a second it's gonna pop me up. I'm gonna keep it on my desktop and let's just save that. Okay, I'm gonna unzip my Bootstrap and let me open up what we get into the Bootstrap folder. So basically what we get is CSS, a lot of file in the CSS and in the JS we got two files, JS and MinJS. Now MinJS basically is a minified version of JavaScript and it's of a smaller size basically and, and removing all the comments, removing all the unnecessary uh, spaces and all these things. If I go back in here you can see that it's just 100 KB and this is 47 KB. So min, minified files are much smaller. Basically these are the same code. And same goes for the CSS. Again, uh, there are a lot of CSS in here. We are not worried about uh, like map and all these things. We are just worried about bootstrap CSS and bootstrap CSS uh, min.css, okay? Uh, we are not gonna do anything else in here. So what you have to do, you can use bootstrap.css or maybe bootstrap min.css. Basically, they are the same. Now, let me open up our Bootstrap 4 folder there. And what I'm gonna do, so let me talk, walk you through with the best practice as well. We would be skipping these best practice sometimes, but I think uh, because we are just dealing up with the basics. So let's create a new folder there and name it as CSS. Create an, another new folder and name as JS. So JavaScript is going to go into JS, CSS is going to go into CSS. Okay, so let's drag and drop CSS, although we should be working with the min.css because it's smaller, uh, but right now let's just stick to the basics. So this is bootstrap.css, let's go back. In the JS, we have to go with the JavaScript as well. So let's just link up the bootstrap.js and that's it. So we need these two files. Let's close this bootstrap guy, this one as well, so we can see now that our folder structure has got JS and CSS as well. Let me expand it for you. Okay, there we go. Now we have to link it through it. Now let's first link at this bootstrap.css. So how we are gonna do that? Now what we have to do is let's go in here and hit an enter and just below the meta tag. What we're gonna do is we're gonna write CSS and colon and let's hit the tab there. Oops, not the CSS. Oops, I'm writing it wrong. We have to write style colon CSS and hit the tab key there. And it's not working. Let's just use the only style and the style tag is working. Okay, that's good. And now we're gonna give it a source there as well. Oops, I happen to remember. Now sometimes these happen to me, these happen to me. Sorry for that. We have to write link colon CSS. Sometimes it's easy to forget the Emmet shortcuts. And there we go. With the link CSS we get all the boilerplate code for linking the CSS. Now our CSS file is actually inside the CSS folder and it's named as bootstrap.css. So we're gonna do exactly the same. Let's just remove this guy and we're gonna say, now notice one more thing. If I go into the document in here, notice when I just say it as CSS slash bootstrap.css and I hit the save key there, notice automatically things have changed for me. Now the browser keyboard shortcuts and everything is being flushed out and uh, things are looking much better. Now you might be thinking, hey, if that's it, yep, that's it. That's this, just the CSS. But in order to use the JavaScript file, we need a couple of more things. Now what we need, uh, although it just says, hey, you can just uh, link up your script, uh, JavaScript source, and that's pretty much it, but it's not gonna work like that. The JavaScript of the bootstrap requires uh, the jQuery and in this version of the bootstrap for it also requires Tether as well. Now you can always link up them, download uh, your jQuery and Tether and can work with that. Uh, I can just copy this and just below the body I can paste that. Uh, I need to expand this a little bit, okay. Now this is good and you can see again these are linking with the CDN. We don't need this, I'll hit, uh, I'll place my cursor here, command X to just cut that. And we also don't need these integrities and all these things. We can just get rid of this, make it a little bit cleaner. So this is how our code looks like. But is it going to work? Uh, I would say no, it's not going to work. And obviously we need to link up a couple of files. We could have downloaded the jQuery and uh, we could have linked the jQuery and the Tether as well. 
uh, but I think we can go with a couple of good steps uh, like the bootstrap CDNs and we can walk in through with the CDNs as well. So this was basically just a, I would say half installation of the bootstrap because we haven't uh, linked our JS in here. Uh, we can do so but it's not gonna working. Uh, that is why I'll walk you through with the CDN and along with I'll walk you through how you can do that manually as well. Okay so let's catch up in the next video and walk you through with how the things can be done exactly the same uh, but with the CDNs.